there, casual citizens. It is I, your uh, companion, Matt. And your other main character, Dan. Dan! Actually, call me Bumple Snort. Bumple Snort, the warrior. Oh, yeah, so, so where we left off, we were doing some synth... Uh, we were doing some recruiting, kind of. We, we had to find this guy what? to get details. What? And he, he just asked us if we had a Geiger counter. What? And we said, ours is in the shop. That's kind of like a... A secret code to be like. It's all right. We're here. What hey, shop? It's the wasteland. We're with the radio. I know. <laughs> this doesn't even make sense. We're with the railroad. So that's, <laughs> climbs in the shop. Haha. Uh -huh. And now Dan's playing again because we're I playing Fire Four. <laughs> hey, yeah, we're. I can see you now. Hello, friend. That's fun. Hello, Hi, Deacon. 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 We try to get together as well as we can. Did I did I Ports. show you the fan art we got yeah, about uh, Mr. Broom? First no. Huh? Do we get fan art about Mr. Broom? Yeah, it's me carrying Mr. Broom around. I love it. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> that is great. I, I, I feel very accomplished that there's. First of all, fan art makes me happy. <laughs> like as soon as I see somebody do something like with us. Yeah. Oh my god. That's, it, it's just like it holy crap. It tickles me pink. It, yeah, it's it, expression. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be a stick figure of me like punching a wall or something. Oh my god. It's gosh. just. I love it. I love fan art. I love that people take the time, you know, to like interact with us. It's just cool. But it's just the fact that Mr. Broom. <laughs> Out of nowhere, it just became one of the single greatest characters, uh, <laughs> it, and it bothers Matt. It does. It, it annoys me. So I think that I don't know why that adds to it. I don't know why it annoys you so much. I don't know it's either. Broom, man. I don't know either. I just saw it was a dead bit. I was like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> hey, oh, things oh. are happening. Things are happening. Dogs. So. Dogs. Let's talk about some things, Dan, yeah. that are happening with the channel specifically. Okay. That we learned today. Uh, so, uh, if you've ever watched I our channel... Talk about it. Oh, we're going to talk about it. Oh. If you watched our channel for a while, audio capture for our voices always... There always seems to be something wrong. And you think after almost three years of doing this, we had it figured out. <laughs> well... <laughs> We figured out one thing, and that was turning the, the new setup we have. Um, thanks to our Patreon, thank you uh, for our lovely audio equipment. I, I'm still was fine tuning and getting it exactly right, and, and, and making sure it worked nice. So I I have that figured out now. That should be done for forever. Should. Well, <laughs> before we got started today, I decided, hey Dan, let's test some audio. I see a lot of streamers oh, using their mics like this. I know ours don't work like that, but I want to try anyway, just to be clear. I sounded like this, and Dan was exceptionally quiet, even though we were talking at the same volume. And you know, I've, I've, I have a slightly quieter voice. He and does. I, I'm, I know that, so sometimes I have to project a little yes, more. Yes, and I just naturally project to the point that sometimes at the end of our recessions, uh, my throat's a little sore. Right. And it's just, it's just a house. It's just how we are. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's normal. It, it's normal for us. And we have the level later to help with that, which is great. Um, post processing. We spent probably 10, 15 minutes figuring out why Dan's voice was a lot quieter. I switched the wires. I switched the plugins. We pushed a bunch of buttons on our, uh, Euphoria machine that, that takes the audio in before it goes to the PC. I tested some decibel stuff out on the PC. I made sure things were recording in mono, um, which actually they're not right now. I don't think. Now that I think about it, did I fix that? I think I unfixed it, Dan. You unfixed it? I unfixed it. I'm going to fix it right now. All right. So in theory, great. I'll fix it. Fix it, Matt. It's fixed. Can't break the code. Yep. 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 Enter the yep. code in, Deacon. Yep. Okay. Well, we're going to stop recording after this episode to make sure everything's right. Okay. But. To get back to, so see what I mean? We're still, we're still figuring <laughs> things out. Um, Dan, I made a mistake. No. And I never thought to address it to make sure he knew not to make the mistake because it's not abundantly clear. Apparently. 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 <laughs> now I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. I read the manual. I, I saw the direction the mic captures in. Dan didn't read that manual. 
<laughs> and when we get together, I set up my mic, he sets up his mic. I set up my stand, he sets up his stand. We both plug our, our lines into the uh, machine to then get, get plugged into the computer and I set up that stuff. You, the, the mics we use have a directional input. They're, they pick up in every direction, but there's a main direction you're supposed to speak I into the mic. I water right now. Oh, you should. I would drink that. Look at that. Oh. That roach is making sure it's clean Death. for you. I guess so. <laughs> Thanks, roach. Uh, <laughs> so, Dan, all this time, assumed that it was equal opportunity around the mic. That no matter which way you spoke into it, it picked you up crystal clear every time and that's not the case I didn't know I didn't, didn't know but now he does so now this should sound better <laughs> in hey theory man. all right listen what a lot of mics capture in a 360 degree radius which is why I never thought like uh, I just never thought like he either front or back you know it should work yeah now, that's not the case no yeah and i i kind of was setting this up as if he doesn't do any audio stuff dan did a lot of stuff at our church for years setting up mics running the boards uh working with the mixers so he he knows the stuff usually <laughs> it's just in our particular situation i usually handle all that and i never i i take responsibility good <laughs> We're not it's telling not my you. Fault. I don't make mistakes, man. To do that, look, I even took the mic from you before we started. I said, "Hand me the mic. I want to make sure that these two dials are set properly." Oh, a sweet roll. I don't want to drink the water. Dude, drink the water. So good. You gotta drink the water. Look, this dead guy's been fermenting in it. It's gonna be like wine. Delicious. Dead guy wine. I love dead guy wine. <laughs> dead guy wine. Don't you? Squirt on a stick. Get yours today. Get your <laughs> get dead. Your, get your dead guy wine down at the store. <laughs> Now, find it. Find it in your local grocery store. It's Australian, apparently. Your state's in the green. That means you got the green to get some dead guy wine. Dead guy wine. <laughs> dead guy wine. Buy it today. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd buy it. There's another. There's another shirt. <laughs> dead guy wine. Yeah, dead guy. We have, so we got dead guy wine, and we have the professional. All right, what was that? I should have written that down. I feel it's, like I wrote that down somewhere. You, you probably did. Oh, professionally. Professionally terrible or something like that? Uh, yeah, professionally terrible. Professionally... I don't know. Professional. We're Profes professionally yeah, we're professionals. Professionally it's unprofessional? Is that, that it? I, no. I, I know what episode it is. I can go find it. Pretty quick. Help! Ignore the tinking of my cup as I drink coffee. Yeah, stop being fancy. Drinking out of a cup. Dude, I got my pinky out and everything. Damn. That's cool. Straight up fancy. Pop. Dang, Pop. he didn't look so, so, so good. No. So, I, uh, yeah, what? I am the cause of many problems, man. It <laughs> happens throughout my life. You know, I okay. Just, there's a lot of things that happen that, you know, I go throughout my entire life doing it one way, and then I realize, like, I've been doing it wrong my entire life. And that, that just seems to be exactly, you know, that's just a me thing. Now, now I think everybody has th a, a thing that everyone else figured out in their childhood or somebody told them that as an adult you learn on your own and you go... Crap. <laughs> but not crap. <laughs> right, yeah. A little, little stronger than that. Just a little bit. I was certainly in my 20s when I realized what W was two U's. As in W. Yeah. That that wasn't a... That the, never, like, struck you no. like, hey. The way I was taught English was this word means this word only. Right. It has no basis in anything else. This, every word, every every word <laughs> exists in a void and you have to take each word and just know it and you can't there's no shortcuts there's no combining things there's no that words don't work like that right it's just everything exists in a void <laughs> it's true with the exception of like boxes and box you know stuff <laughs> like that that that's together but uh, yeah, so that, that's something I still struggle with, even today. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know what I always found interesting? Linguistics. Uh, this is going off topic a little bit. All right, we're, I think we don't even have a topic, so... You're right, you're absolutely <laughs> right, all right? But the, the theory that math is either created or we're just discovering it, and we don't know. Oh, that's weird. So, 
as we go through life, you know, we find mathematical solutions to certain problems, right? Mm-hmm. We're creating that yeah. out of our mind. We're trying to figure this out. But we don't know whether we invent it or not. Unless we find an alien species that is like, hey, we do this m- mathematical thing in a completely different way or a completely same way. You know, yeah. it's like, you'll, we'll never know. And that's just that's <laughs> interesting to me. Like, that is cool. One plus one could be done a different way and we have no idea. That, that is the fascinating thing to me, too. It just, the, um, as Get. a stem, I forget, whatever the scientific method is when you're learning that growing up in school what are you doing dan i'm just uh oh, waiting for this oh. guy to unlock the computer oh okay he's he's going quick isn't he um everything you learn too tight. is systematic is right. to do this you you must do this to do that you must do that to do this you must do that you right. cannot go outside the box you must work within the box yeah yet to make scientific discoveries you gotta work outside. You gotta the box. work outside the box. Exactly. <laughs> That's frustrating. It's just, it's just wild. It's, it's such like I get why we teach that way. I do. I understand. But at the same time, it's like, you, you know, what's frustrating. You gotta, have, you gotta be have creativity is involved. The, <laughs> having teachers that were like that. Yeah. Like this is how I do a math problem, and if you don't do it the same way, I'm gonna fail you. Mm-hmm. Which is like. It's BS. If you know how to do... Like, my one friend and I were talking the other day, and, and she was like... <gasps> she was talking about she? calculus. It, it was one of Maddie's <laughs> friends. Oh, okay. And uh, she was talking about how she took calculus before physics. And when oh, she boy. went into physics, she was able to use her calculus to solve problems, right? Mm-hmm. And, and it was a lot easier that way. Well, the physics teacher didn't like that. He was like, <laughs> I'm teaching it this way. You need to do it that way. And he's mm. like, you're cheating. Because okay, that's he, a step too far. Yeah, he's like, you're cheating if if you think, because like obviously you're getting your answers off the internet yeah. or whatever. She's like, but I'm doing it on tests. Like, what what what, yeah. what do you want from me? And I just I hate that because like if you have a way of doing something, do like, it that way. You so in that in, in that environment, I get where the teacher's is coming from, but saying you're cheating is the wrong way to handle that. Yeah, it's like you if you don't understand the basics of the physics physics equation from this perspective you won't be able to progress in the class in a way that is helpful to you exactly that's the same thing entirely different way of approaching it <laughs> yeah, I, it's frustrating it, it is I, if i were a teacher i'd be like all right you know what i'm teaching this way mm-hmm. and i i like to see that yeah but if you have a different way it's completely against what I do, but it still works. I'm going to have you sit down and show me how you do I mean, that just yeah. to make sure that you're not. That's a great idea. Because then you're pr- that student's proving that they know how to arrive to that conclusion. Right. Now, one, one of the things that I, I, it's always kind of stuck with me, and it, this is like a self pat on my back. So indulge me. Right. <laughs> um, but when I was, I was at, in college originally, um, I was going for a teaching degree. So, hello, Jangles the Moon Monkey. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> um, I had to teach a class because, uh, you know, student teacher kind of situation. You have to go uh, follow a class for a semester. You basically go once a week, observe the right. teacher, observe the class, pick up learning techniques, da 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 da. Well, this one teacher had me do a lesson. I, I taught in our class how to do asymmetry. Okay. Which is not exactly, you can't just say, you know, it's three inches from the left, you put a big block. Two inches from the right, you put a smaller block. Asymmetry. Because right. it's it's a visual. It, it's not it's not an exact size. Yeah, exactly. So you kind of have to get the, the feeling of it. But in, a, in it, you have to articulate it. So I told the class, I'm like, I want you to cut out shapes. I and love uncut- shapes. Uh, yeah. And it was, it, was a fifth, <laughs> it was like a fourth or fifth grade class. Oh, oh so, okay. You, you should have started with that. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking you were teaching like a college class or something. So, and I, I described it as a seesaw. Right. I said, you know, you have a seesaw, you have someone with more weight on the one side, and it goes down. The other side, someone's lighter. And then you, you can go up and down either way, right? Right. Well, that's how asymmetry works. Something's heavier on the one and lighter on the other. Whether that's in color, whether that's in form, what what have you. So I taught, I was teaching a class, I'm like, okay, imagine you see saw you're at the playground. Now do something, make shapes on the surface, on your canvas, if you will, 
to show asymmetry. And I want to see, I want each of you to make three examples to see if you can get it. Everyone got it, no problem. As it's going around, I noticed one of my students had started making a 3D bush because she was making a playground. Ah. She was like physically constructing and making a 3D model of a playground out of construction paper because she misunderstood what I was saying. Okay. So at that point, I just was like, okay, well, all right. So you got the 3D model. It's great. Look from the top down. And now you see that you have this big thing here. So I'm going to make a smaller 3D object on the other side. Right. And you still, she still got the concept, but I met her where she was. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, so. that's good. Again, patting myself on the back, and we should probably end the episode on that high yeah, note. Probably. <laughs> Look, I'm, we got a gun. Self-absorbed. All right, I'll, I'll explain Ooh, it on the next episode. Oh, that would be great. It's my one of my favorite weapons. Ooh, so. fancy.